Since the 1960s, programs like NASA's SETI and those inspired to take up the reins after its cancellation in 1994 have searched the sky for radio transmissions coming from the depths of space, hoping that someday we might answer one of humanity's greatest existential questions. Are we alone in the universe? Now, searching for a radio signal from an intelligence source from Earth is literally like looking for a needle in a haystack. But throughout our brief history, cosmically speaking, of searching the skies, we found a few signals that held some amount of promise, such as 1977's WOW signal, which to this day remains unexplained. Well, as of filming this episode, the Parkes Telescope in South Wales picked up radio waves coming from Proxima Centauri, our closest neighboring star. We're gonna dive right into it. But first, be sure to drop a like on this video, leave a comment about your favorite cheesy sci-fi movie about SETI, like that weird Charlie Sheen movie, The Arrival, with the aliens with the backwards knees. Yeah, you know the one. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachi, author of the Neo Rackham series. And this is Science Cat. Before we get into these radio waves coming from Proxima Centauri, I feel like it's important to explain why the WOW signal was and is so significant. So keep your pants on, people. And why it's important when radio astronomers say the signal discovered by the Parkes Telescope is just as significant. In 1977, the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope stumbled upon a powerful narrowband signal coming from some unknown part of space. The signal only lasted about 72 seconds, like a brightly lit candle briefly flaring to life before fading to darkness once more. Jerry Ehrman, the man who first observed the signal, famously printed the data sheets out and wrote WOW on them. Hence, its name and all. To this day, the signal remains a total mystery, though several theories have risen up throughout the years. One serious contender rising up in 2017 suggesting that the signal was actually coming from a rather large comet. Though it seems like no one's really talking about that theory anymore, a newer solution has arisen which may soon explain where the WOW signal came from once and for all. And it's all thanks to an amateur astronomer. Well, if you, you know, value the data. The European Space Agency's Gaia telescope has mapped over 1.3 billion stars, and using its data, amateur astronomer Alberto Caballero decided to search for sun-like stars in the general area where the WOW signal was originally detected, using the most comprehensive 3D map of our galaxy in the process. Caballero was able to find 67 stars that loosely fit the characteristics of our star. You know, the normal important stuff like mass, temperature, and radius. And guess what? Oh wait, that's right. There is only one star in the constellation Sagittarius that matches those exact requirements. Now, Caballero is not saying that the WOW signal must have come from this star, which is called 2 mass. 1928-1982-264-0123 if you want to find it yourself. As many of the stars in the constellation Sagittarius are too dim to be catalogued. And really, any of them could be the source. But hypothetically, I have got to get that thing fixed. If we were to find an Earth-like world around Tumas, that's what I'm calling it and you can't stop me then we might want to keep our telescopes, radio or otherwise, tuned in its direction. But even if it turns out that Tumas is the source of the WOW signal and aliens really were trying to drop us a line, it's 1800 light years away from us. Even at the speed of light, it would take us 1800 years to reach it, since, you know, a light year is equivalent to how far light can travel in a vacuum in a year, but you knew that. So we're not exactly neighbors, and long distance relationships almost never work out. Which is my way of segueing to the discovery of this new radio signal coming from Proxima Centauri. As mentioned in the long, long ago time of when this video first started, the Parkes Telescope in South Wales picked up radio waves coming from Proxima Centauri, our closest neighboring star. This signal, a uh, narrow beam of radio waves, was observed in April and May of 2019 during a 30-hour observation window. And since that observation, the data has been under constant study, 
And at least in 2020, the longest year ever when this video is being recorded, there does not appear to be an Earth-based explanation for the signal. Signals like this, the WOW signal and every other signal that has ever been of interest before or since, SGR 1935 plus 2154, the Lorimer Burst, the Blinking Stars, the Space War, SHGB02 plus 14A, and HD164595, just to name a few off the top of my head, that were definitely not pulled from a script originally written for top tens, need to be carefully scrutinized before they can be taken seriously. And the first thing that astronomers look for is whether the signals are being produced by ground-based radio equipment or like a satellite or something. As a side note, the movie Contact was inspired by Dr. Jill Tarter, who was the head of Project Phoenix sector of the SETI Institute, one of SETI's babies. Dr. Tarter found a promising artificial radio signal that later turned out to be the SOHO spacecraft. So these things are often explained by terrestrial signals bouncing back at us. However, while a natural explanation has not been ruled out yet, hypothetically, <sighs> is it just me or is it just, is it getting worse? If we do find out that this signal isn't terrestrial and doesn't have a natural explanation, would it really be a surprise? The Proxima Centauri system is our closest neighboring star system and is part of the trinary Alpha Centauri system. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf and currently we know of two exoplanets that orbit it. Proxima C, which is thought to be a super Earth weighing in at seven times the mass of the Earth, probably not a candidate for life, and Proxima B, which is an Earth mass planet about 17% more massive than Earth, orbiting within the habitable zone. Now before you go screaming that it must be aliens, let's pull back a second and take a look at all the reasons why our dreams of extraterrestrial life around Proxima B might not be a thing, because I love ruining things for you. Red dwarves are extremely active, meaning they flare a lot. Now, the Earth orbits at a relatively safe distance from our sun. So when our star goes spitting waves of electromagnetically charged plasma through the solar system, otherwise known as a solar storm or a coronal mass ejection, we're relatively safe from being hit by a flare that might ruin us or bake the surface. Not so with Proxima b. It orbits super close to the star, completing one orbit every 11 days, meaning that it's going to be in much worse shape if it gets hit by a powerful coronal mass ejection, or CME for short because I don't feel like saying coronal mass ejection anymore. Back in September of 1859, the Earth got slammed with a powerful CME which collapsed the telegraph system. If we were hit by a similar flare today, it would cause a ton of damage to electrical grids, maybe even enough to knock them out entirely. So how powerful are the flares that Proxima Centauri emits? Well, back in 2016, the Everyscope observed one of the most powerful super flares ever recorded coming from Proxima Centauri. This flare was so powerful that this red dwarf, which isn't normally visible to the naked eye, was actually visible to the naked eye. But if you think that's bad, the fact that it's been observed that Proxima Centauri flares at least five times a year adds another problem to the mix. If just one of those flares hits the planet every year, then it's thought that if Proxima b had an ozone layer comparable to the Earth's, it would be depleted by 90% within five Earth years. That's bad. But what is perhaps worse for the case for life on Proxima Centauri b is that planets that orbit so close to their parent star are typically tidally locked. While it's not known if eyeball planets can or can't support life, and we're not really certain whether or not a planet like this could support a strong magnetic field, it would at the very least make the planet extremely hot on the star-facing side and extremely cold on the dark side. But all of this does not rule out the possibility of life. After all, we're learning that life can survive in some surprising places. So, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised by Proxima b and find life there. But for now, it looks a bit unlikely. Wow, I intended this section to be so much more positive than it ended up being. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like and comment below to tell me your favorite thing about SETI. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of ScienceCat. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.